Where do it here? I got to talk right into it. A little bit away from your mouth. A little better. Yes. Yes. There. There's the sweet spot. Come on in, folks. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And you may think that that is simply alliteration, but actually, the first welcome is welcome to Art Hop, sponsored by the Arts Council of Greater Kalamazoo. Second is welcome to Art Hop here at the Park Trades, which is the veritable epicenter of all things artful in Kalamazoo. And thirdly, welcome to Show and Tell, the gallery show, a group show by the Alliance of Kalamazoo Artists right here in the Park Trade Center. Uh, through the course of the evening, there will be a number of featured speakers speaking about their inspiration for their artwork. My name is Jerry Hess. I am sole proprietor of a company called Medullary Studios. We are a fine woodworking company which offers products and services in four separate areas. Please come on in. Um, peruse the art. Uh, if you have questions about the presentation, you just uh, get my attention and shout them out. Four areas of woodworking. Furniture and fine furnishings for the home. Fine woodworking for commercial and public spaces. Outdoor architectural landscape woodworking. And then finally, adventures in the rehabilitation of antique wooden windows and restoration carpentry to go with. And a person may ask, where did anyone come up with a name like Medullary Studios? <laughs> uh, Medullary. Medullary Studios. Well, Medullary Rays are the vascular tissue that give pork or song oak its very distinctive grain pattern. The tiger stripe or flake and quarter sawn oak is one of the primary woods used in arts and crafts furniture. Arts and crafts furniture is one of the primary uh, focuses of the furniture work that we do at the Blueberry Studios. All right. So, from one of the godfathers of the arts and crafts movement, he suggests have nothing in your home that you do not know to be useful or believe to be beautiful. Now, actually, that is not an admonition against children, okay? <laughs> it speaks to the utilitarian nature of arts and crafts furniture. And the arts and crafts movement was a social movement, really a reaction to the machine age and the mass production of furniture and home furnishings with all the uh, hoo ha that's attached and, and embellished upon it. So, of the four categories of woodworking, one is furniture and fine furnishing for the home. And this is an example of a commission piece. This is a jewelry, all, <laughs> I can't say it, armoire. Um, the fellow who commissioned this wanted a, an anniversary piece for his wife, he brought me photographs of the wrought ironwork on their bedstead and wondered if I could reproduce that pattern in some way. So the applique on these oak doors is in solid walnut, and those geometrics are directly drawn from the client's uh, bedroom furniture. The piece opens with clamshell doors. The hanging pegs for the uh, necklaces and, and bangles are actually attached to the carcass of the piece as opposed to being attached to the doors. If they're on the doors, then the necklaces all bang together when you swing the door open and get tangled. The drawers are in the classic lingerie chest style. There are seven of them. They get progressively smaller as they rise to the top. The top four drawers are lined with velvet. The bottom three drawers are actually lined with aromatic cedar. 
you know, I, I suppose that one could keep the love letters from days lost in the bottom one, and the second one maybe your your long gloves, you know, the elbow length gloves for, for, for dinnerware. The jewelry box on top um, does not have any ring rolls in it, as the woman it was commissioned for wears brooches and pins and necklaces, but no rings. So we can do work to whatever the client's uh, needs and desires. Another piece, much smaller in stature, are these Tiffany-style uh, bookends. These are geraniums, and it's uh, just sort of a hit towards spring when we're in the middle of February and March in snowy Kalamazoo. Medullary Studios does work in hardwoods, in veneer, in stained glass, and in soft metals. Um, we can meld all of these different genres into the project to your liking. Boy, that looks pixelated, doesn't it? Um, this is a style of table known as a samnoe. This was a custom piece done for a, a woman's entryway to her home. That is a stained glass panel in the Tiffany style uh, hibiscus flower. And, and the door. The drawer is dove table. The, uh, the table is of appropriate height for the mirror that's on the wall behind where she, she wanted to place this. The hardware is matched to the hardware in her uh, entryway of her home. The legs are tapered, compound tapers in the classic arts and crafts style. And at the top left hand side, you can see they're corbelled at the top. The second category is that of commercial. Uh, fine woodworking for commercial uh, patrons and for public spaces. This is a restaurant banquette that we refurbished and rebuilt so that uh, people of considerable size may be seated at this restaurant. Uh, this is a replacement table top that was installed at a different restaurant. Uh, the, the client asked for solid oak, they asked for the proper dimensions, and uh, the, the color was a custom choice as well. And our friends at Kalamazoo Candle, right around the corner from us here, have been working with the Jewelry Studios almost since Kalamazoo Candle started. So when you see their products on display at the online retailers, that's the Jewelry Studios product that they're displaying their candles on. <laughs> the third category of woodworking is, well, can't leave these out. These are trestle tables. Um, they are being used as work tables by an artist studio here in the Park Trades. The tops are solid ash. The uh, bases are made in tulip poplar and then they've been dyed that ebony color. Um, those are pretty striking and yet they're going to be used as work tables here. So for each category, we can work with you. Uh, the next category of woodworking, the third out of four, is that of outdoor landscape architectural woodworking. This is a pergola in a very quiet setting. Uh, the choice of stain color very much blends with the, the environment. Uh, this is constructed almost entirely of western red cedar. Uh, the core of the posts is a pressure treated number so that that will have a lot of staying power. Uh, we use all the standard uh, principles in outdoor construction. You can see that the post closest to us at the foreground of the picture is raised. It's on galvanized uh, brackets raised above the ground so that it does not uh, collect moisture and, and drop off. Another project, this is a Victorian gazebo. If you look, it's actually half a gazebo, <laughs> but it was to serve its purpose. This is the site of someone's wedding. I was asked if I could, if these folks could borrow 
my gazebo. And uh, I, you know, quickly explain, you know it's only half a gazebo, right? Oh, that's exactly what we want. Um, this was a beautiful setting. It's a, a bubbling brook. This is over, over at Battle Creek. Uh, to the right of the picture is uh, private property that's uh, part of the Kellogg Foundation. Uh, this, uh, the gazebo was set up as the site of the wedding ceremony and where we are looking at it from is a green sward where they had set up chairs and there's a weeping willow off to the right. It was just terribly picturesque. And it was a, a, a really, uh, you know, a beautiful event that was enhanced by the classic detailing of a Bitcoin structure. So the final category is that of restoration carpentry and the rehabilitation of antique wood windows. And again, this is a quote from one of the godfathers of the arts and crafts movement. Old buildings are not ours. They belong partly to those who built them and partly to the generations of mankind who are to follow us. The dead still have their right to them, that which they labeled for. They have no right to oblivion. In modern day practical application, there's an enormous amount of truth to that, in that antique wooden windows in a house that, say, was built in 1832 may be rehabilitated and last another 130 years. Whereas a replacement window that you purchase on the commercial market and install in your house has a guarantee of maybe 15 or 20 years and then it's put in the landfill. Something to be considered. One of our projects was to work on the Bartholomew House in the Stewart Avenue neighborhood. It is a Greek revival. It is established as one of the oldest houses in Kalamazoo. It dates from 1832. And I was independently able to conclude that by the shape of the wooden dividers on these windows. The profile dates from just that time period. So when I took these windows out and started working on them, removing all the, the dead paint, removing the bad putty, Replace, replacing the uh, any broken or, or cracked glass, rehabilitating the wooden frame, repainting, reglazing, reinstalling. When I started working on that, I found the shape of those muntins, those dividing pieces, to be dating from 1830 to 1850. So these windows were handmade by a man who probably died of natural causes before Abraham Lincoln was elected. And I got to mess with the windows. <laughs> this is what one looks like after I've been happy. Um, pretty striking difference. Uh, something to note in this photograph. Note the reflection of the leaves of the trees across the street and how they're all ripply. The glass is the original glass from the 1830s. It's called cylinder glass because the way they made the way they made plate, you know, uh, flat glass to put in windows was to grow to blow a giant bubble of molten glass, cut it open with the shears, and pound it out on a tabletop. So that glass has all sorts of inclusions of uh, specks of, of sand, uh, little air bubbles, uh, swirls. It's just marvelous stuff. Um, another uh, project, which is not from a historic district, this is from the Waite, uh, Waite Avenue neighborhood in Oakland Drive. Uh, this is a archtop storm door, which dates from 1929. And over time, many people have tried to repair it. And yeah, they did a lot of damage. Um, you can see that it doesn't meet at the top, that the rail has fallen away that someone has put inappropriate hinges along the left-hand side there. You can see that there is, it's like a mouse hole from here, but there is a lot of rotted wood at the bottom panel. 
after rehabilitation and reinstallation, this is what we have. Um, this actually required an awful lot of work. The left-hand side, the style, the upright, that had to be entirely replaced. All the pieces in the panel had to be re-glued, and uh, those that were eaten by bugs had to be removed and replaced. Uh, there is new hardware on this, so those are stainless steel butt hinges, and uh, that is an antique brass uh, latch, and of course there is a sweep at the bottom. So now it is weatherproof, and it looks quite handsome. This is this is a our project window out of the historic district in uh, this house is off of Walnut Street. This is the bottom of a large stained glass and plate glass window. There isn't a lot left there. It's all rotted away. This one dates from 1909. And the bottom rail you can see is just, well, it's gone. It's in bad shape. And here's what we have as a replacement. So I have used the technical term is Dutchman, where I've sistered in new wood. I used African mahogany, which is very resistant to weather. I've replaced the ends of the rotten muntins. I've replaced uh, an upright style. Uh, the bottom rail is entirely replaced, and those are uh, those are through tenons holding the bottom together. And if you direct your attention over to the east wall here. This is the, uh, the window in the picture and its current state of being rehabilitated. So it is coming together and there's more to do. Eventually, not, not, not soon. <laughs> so there we have a brief walkthrough of the different uh, Offerings and services offered by the Studios Fine Woodworking. Again, I'm Jerry Hess, and thank you very much.